What's up everyone, Subterranean here, and today we're going to learn how to chop up pre-existing songs with the drum rack inside of Ableton to use as samples for new tracks. This technique can be very useful for many subgenres of hip-hop and even some subgenres of house music like French house and future funk. So to start off, you're going to need a pre-existing track to sample. If you're releasing your song for a major label to be featured on an album or anything else commercial, this may not be possible to do without paying royalty fees, but if you're just releasing a track for free for SoundCloud or YouTube, you should be fine. We'll be putting out a video soon discussing where and how to find interesting tracks to sample, so stay tuned for that soon. When you've found a track with a section you like and you'd want to sample it, you can begin the sampling process. I'm using a royalty-free track from the website freemusicarchive.org. And I would like to point out, before we start sampling our track, in the description box below, we'll have a link where you can download the full Ableton project file, so if you want to use this sample in particular, you won't have to go through anything. Once you've got your sample dropped into Ableton, you're going to want to figure out the original track's BPM. If you're sampling a song with live instruments and organic drums rather than a drum machine and synths, the BPM isn't always going to be 100% on sync. It's going to shuffle around a little bit because they're playing live instruments. But you should at least try to get a very good estimate of the BPM. The way I like to determine the BPM of my tracks in Ableton is by turning the warp off of my songs. So where it says warp right here, I'm going to click off. So we're not judging the BPM before we've actually figured it out. And now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to zoom into my sample display. And I'm going to make sure that the start marker lines up with the exact beginning of the song. So we're just going to zoom in a little more here so it's accurate. We'll take our start marker and then we'll drag that right about here to the beginning of the song. Now I'm going to turn on my metronome and I'm going to skip through the song and we're going to see if the metronome matches up or not. So I'm going to start it here. And the metronome seems to be working pretty well. Let's skip in a little lighter to make sure the metronome's still on beat. Yep. So seeing how the metronome is working well at 120 beats per minute, we can assume that the rough BPM of this track is 120 as well. If the metronome was lagging behind the track, then we would want to speed our BPM up to match, and if the metronome was going too fast, then we would want to slow down our BPM to match. So now that we know the BPM of our song, we can click on warp, and there we go. Now the song is warped to 120 beats per minute. The next thing you're gonna wanna do is you're going to wanna find sections of the song that you'd like to sample and chop up. If you've already heard the song before, then you can just go in and find the exact part that you'd like to sample. But I don't really know the ins and outs of this song. I just kinda chose it at random, so I'm going to skip through this song. I'm going to listen through and see if I can find some good sample sections. This isn't really too interesting here. Ooh. Now this part sounds pretty good. Here, let me just change my grid up a little bit. I think I could make something out of this. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to split this track where I want the sample to start and end. I'm going to start the sample right here. So we can press Control E or Command E depending on if you have Windows or Mac. And that'll split our track into this little section here. And I'm just going to go for a basic 8 bar sample. So I'm going to end the sample right here. And we can hit Control E or Command E again. And there we go, now we've got this little section. If you want to keep better track of your samples and you don't want them to blend in with the original song on your timeline, what you can do is you can create a separate audio track before you create the drum rack just for your samples. I already created one right here called Sample Bits, so I'm just going to drag my first sample down here. And there we go, now we've got the first sample we can work with. I'd like to have a little bit more variety for my track, so I'm going to listen to this song just a little bit more, and we'll see if we can find another nice section. Ooh. 
Ooh, there's another nice part here. I'm gonna create another eight bar loop by splitting here at the start. And right here where I want it to end, we can split it again. And there we go. Now we've got two nice sample sections. So now that we've got two sections that we'd like to sample and chop up, we can import them to a drum rack. I'm gonna go over to instruments and then I'm gonna drag on a drum rack. And now I'm going to drag our first sample and our second sample onto two drum pads. Now you may think of this as being a little bit of an outlandish concept because the drum rack is typically used for drums, that's where it gets its name. But the interesting thing about the drum rack is that it acts as sort of a stacked version of the sampler or simpler. Because when you think about it, all of these little drum pads are like mini versions of the sampler and they have a lot of the same controls as the sampler. So in this case, we're using the drum rack similarly to how we would use the sampler, but in more of a stacked fashion so we can chop up two different sections of a song. Now that we've got our two tracks imported onto the drum pads, I would like to make a few changes to the drum rack first. One thing that you may have noticed, which is pretty cool, is that the drum rack takes our warp settings from the original song and imports them back to our drum pad section. And the drum pads also feature the same time stretching abilities that Ableton normally has. Right now I have it set on repitch. So if we slow our track down, the pitch of our sample will go down along with the BPM. And we have the opposite effect if we speed our track up. We've got some other warp modes in here like complex. This allows you to retain the original pitch while speeding the BPM up or slowing it down. This sounds a little bit too digital and artificial in my opinion, so I'm gonna set it back to repitch because I like the pitch down effect that it gives the sample when you slow it down. One thing that you may have noticed is that the entire sample plays whenever we press a note. Even if we let go of a note on our keyboard or on a MIDI clip, it's still going to play the entire sample. And that can get kind of annoying, especially if you're trying to play two different sections of a sample and they start to overlap. Layering samples over each other can sound cool in some cases, but I don't want that effect for this track. So what we can do is we can set the mode right here to be gate. So now whenever we let go of a note, the sample will stop playing along with the note. Sometimes there might be a little bit of a clicking sound whenever we let go of the note. So to prevent this, I'm gonna add just a little bit of fade out. You don't want too much of it or else it'll start to sound weird, but just add a little bit on there to make the transition a bit more smooth. I'm also going to turn the velocity to volume knob down to 0% for both of these drum pads. So whenever we play notes, the velocity and the volume won't matter if we're playing it on a keyboard or an MPC or any other controller. So we'll just set that down to be at zero, and now we're rocking at the same volume every time. I've got to set this one to be gate as well. And there we go, now it cuts off perfectly. And then once again, I'll just add a little bit of fade out to both of the pads. So now that I've got the drum rack all set up and we've got two nice sample sections, I'm going to record a little rough pattern that we could turn into a full-fledged song. I'm going to disable these two tracks right here, we're not going to need them for now, and I'm going to press record, and I'm just going to sketch out a little pattern here. I'm going to alternate between C1 and C sharp 1. To create a cool hip-hop style pattern, here we go.
now that I've got my pattern recorded, I'm going to go into the MIDI clip and I'm just going to quantize things a little bit. I'm going to stretch out the note right here. And there we go. After just a few minutes, I quantized my sample pattern and now I've got a really good basis for a hip hop beat. And even though I recorded this sample pattern live, you could easily do this by hand using the MIDI editor. It's basically the same as just creating a regular melody. And there we go. Now we all know a really cool method of chopping up samples inside of Ableton. It's actually pretty simple once you know how to do it. And once you've got your pattern already made, you can really start to have fun with it by adding some effects and turning it into a full song. Let's try adding on some cool effects. I'm going to go over to the audio effects tab and let's add on a little bit of multiband compression. We'll just scale that back a bit. That really brings out some more presence in the sound. It makes it more forceful. If you've got some sub bass in your track, you'll probably want to add on an EQ to get rid of those low end sounds. We can bring up the highs if we want to as well. If you're going for a lo-fi hip hop sound, you might want to go for a bit crushing plugin like the Redux inside of Ableton. You can get some really nice crunchy sounds with this. And now all we would really need to do is to layer some hip hop drums and maybe a sub bass over this and then we would have basically a full track. Now if you're into sampling songs for house music, you're going to definitely want to crank up the tempo first. We've got this rocking at 88 BPM. Let's boost this up to something a little bit more lively like 125. We'll take the redux off for now. And if you want to get some cool funky sounds similar to artists like Daft Punk, you might want to try messing with some filter plugins. Let's drag on the auto filter, and now we can play with this and see what kind of sounds we get. I'm going to increase the resonance. We'll add on some LFO. And we can bring down the frequency. Let's also bring up the rate so we've got a faster filter. This would sound really cool if we automated it. So you can really see now with this simple method, we can do a lot of things and create a lot of cool different sounding tracks based off of just one sample. And of course you might want to try chopping up the sample in a different way. Try playing it in a different context. That sounds completely different to what we have. To finish things off, let's actually drag on a drum loop really quick to see how this would sound as a funky house song. I'm just going to go find a quick house drum loop. This one will do right here. I'm just going to drag this one out and loop it. And I'm also going to turn the loop on Ableton so I don't have to keep replaying it. And now let's see how this would sound. So that was my tutorial. I hope you all enjoyed it and you learned something new today. If you liked this video, feel free to give us a like and subscribe to the Bass Gorilla YouTube channel.